You're watching Meet the Candidates here on Brockton Community Access, and today I have candidate Rita Mendez, who's running for Councilor at Large here in the City of Champions. Rita, welcome to uh, the studios. Thank you so much for having me here today. Glad to. Um, you are a first-time candidate. You yes. came in third yes. in the preliminary election as a first-time candidate, never running for office before. I would say that's pretty impressive, mm -hmm. okay? Thank you. How are you going to get into the November election, which is right around the corner, top four? It's from eight to four. So what's your strategy? I, I, you're, you, you made it very clear. I'm a mother, not a politician. So Correct. you're not a politician. We all know that. Yes. But you did pretty well politically. So tell us what your strategy is for getting elected on November 5th. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for that. And I was also shocked and caught by surprise when I saw that I came in third because I've been working very hard, but everybody else, they've also been working very hard. So you never know what to expect. So watching the numbers, I was just like everybody else. When I saw that you know, people trust me enough to give me their vote as a first time candidate without really knowing me prior to, I was very amazed to see that and, and very happy and humbled and delighted for that. Now, going on to the November election, I didn't take any easier because I didn't think it would get easier because I, I know it's a new election coming in November. So I didn't just take that for granted. I continued to work twice as hard because then I had less time. Uh, in the September election I had, it started back in March. So I had months to really work the old fashioned way, knocking on people's door, really going out there and meeting people. And then come in November, I had to go around again the entire city in just a month and a half. So I knew the time was gonna be tight, but I just really put myself committed to really meeting as many people as possible, just going out there the old fashioned way, knocking on doors and talking to people. Well, that's how you win when you're knocking on doors and there's a lot of doors. It must be difficult to work and yeah. campaign at the same time, but you really made yourself very visible. Besides going on and knocking on the doors, your face is right on the poster. <laughs> life size and your signs are bigger so yes. i personally think that helped you your husband is like a one-man yes. sign company yes. at this point he's every he's out doing that right now as he, we speak he is he, he loves he really takes pride on his signs he has the vision he knows the perfect location and he works hard to get that location and to make it look just how he wants it and if it's not perfect to his standard then he, he he'll fix it again as many times as necessary we had bad storms the sign just got broken and, and, and we've gone back and fixed many times. But speaking of signs, I had a, a cute um, story. Someone just messaged me on Facebook and she said she brings her son to school every morning and my sign is right there as they go into the school. He sees my sign. So every morning he says, good morning, sign lady. I thought that was the cutest thing ever. Oh, that's neat. <laughs> she that's she neat. messaged me on Facebook just to let me know that. So even the children, they are beginning to see the signs and... and and it's wonderful to see that. So one of the things I noticed during the original forum that the NAACP did, you told your story. Yes. Okay. Now, not everybody saw that. We are going to put that back on TV over the weekend so people can see that, the Candidates Night in the forum as well. Tell us a little bit more about your story. I made the mistake of a lifetime. I went to the men's room at the time you were telling your story. So oh. I didn't actually get to hear it. So even though I saw it on TV, I'd rather yes. hear it in person. So tell us you know, what, what brought you here and what brought you to public service. Yeah, thank you. And the reason that I told my personal story, because I've never done anything political, I'm not a politician as my tagline says, I think it's important for people to at least know where I came from, who I am, my roots, and why I'm running for this position today. So I really think it's important to just let um, people know who I am, a little bit of my personal story. So yes, as I told in the, at the NWACP event, I arrived in this country as a child. I was 12 years old and I did not speak any English when I first came. And I started attending public education and I graduated, I attended Brockton High School. I graduated in 2002. And then from there, while I was in high school, 
my mom, she had some circumstances back in Brazil, so she had to return. I was about 16 years old, and we didn't really have any family members or anybody that would really willing to take on a 16-year-old uh, at the time. So she trusted me enough to say, no, I have to go do this, so you're going to be on your own. So I had to go to a school, public education, Brockton High, and I was um, working at Dunkin' Donuts, closing the stores until midnight, going to school at 7 in the morning, and, and just really being able to make it through high school. But then I had a guidance counselor there that knew my personal story, what I was going through, and she was completely fundamental. She really uh, helped me get in through Massasoit. I got scholarships. She helped me get my um, driver's license because I was still doing uh, driver's ed class and make sure I would get that so I could start driving because mm -hmm. I was walking and I didn't even have a car. So she really was essential to the point that she said if I didn't have a place to live, she would even consider taking me on to her. She was just amazing in my life, an angel that really yes. God put me there. And then from there, I went to Massasoit, graduated in 06. And um, I started selling real estate and things were getting better because the market was doing great and I was selling houses, doing fantastic, do thought that I was just doing good financially. And then, you know, the foreclosure epidemic came in 2008. During the moments of crisis, the most difficult moments in your life, that's when you really bring out the, the strongest part in you. So I lost everything I had because I was doing well financially and I lost everything in the foreclosure epidemic. So I, I told myself I have to go back to school, I have to get a real career, a real education, and that's I learned that I had to finish my bachelor's degree, so I went to UMass Dartmouth, finished my bachelor's degree there, went to law school, also got scholarship at New England Law, and um, graduated from law school in 2017, passed the bar the first time. So it has always taken me so much longer to go through school because I was going part-time, I was working full-time, I had a family, married with a child, and just trying to do everything, but yeah. When people say they can't do something, they got to listen to your story. That's for sure. Because, and it makes all the difference in the world if you have a mentor like that guidance counselor. I remember my guidance counselors yes. really well because they really gave me good advice and they really helped me do that. But you're right, the 2008 foreclosure, oh my that, goodness, that, yes. that almost destroyed Brockton in exactly. a lot of ways. There were houses all over the yes. place. So you came up with your plan B, yes. went to law school. Uh, did that, passed the bar on the first time. Wow, I, I was too afraid to do that. I originally was going to try <laughs> to go to law school and then I'm not a yeah. test taker, but yeah. congratulations on that. So what brought you to the idea to run for office to begin with? Um, again, you hadn't served on any boards or commissions, yeah. but I got to tell you something, being a mother is the toughest job in the it world. Is, okay. It is. I can't speak from personal experience because I was the father. <laughs> yes. But being a mother, yes. you do 10 jobs when you're the mother. Yes. You do all sorts yes. of things. You're the CEO, the CFO, yeah. the the hygiene, you know, health, medicine, dental, everything else. So what what brought you out to run for council at large? Because I um, know myself and I'm, I'm very committed to something and I'm very dedicated to this city. I owe so much to this city and to the people of Brockton that I know that once hopefully um, get elected, I can be an asset to the city. The skills that a city councilor should have is um, skills that it will be good. Someone who went to law school, they understand the legal aspect of it because we're gonna be looking at ordinances. There's a lot of ordinances that a lot of times they pass in the city council, then it has to go to the legal department, and then at the legal department, oh, by the way, it violates a certain portion of federal law, it violates. So it would be good to have an attorney in the city council that could have that um, knowledge, more in-depth experience and understanding with the legal aspect of it and also even overseeing the budget it's also important um, skills that I also have just by working with small businesses by owning a real estate company and, and being that my life skills it would be essential I would say to the people of Brockton and I also represent the people of Brockton because I, I speak Portuguese I speak Spanish and I feel that I can connect to the residents of Brockton to the people of Brockton they know I'm approachable they can come to me they can call me they can talk to me they can explain to me their issues and I can understand and relate to their issues what they're going for so it's just my life story my skills as 
my educational skills, my work skills, I feel that I would greatly um, be an asset to the city, and that's what I want to do. I really wanted, just as much as I'm dedicated and everything else in my life, I will sure be dedicated to the city that gave me everything, just gave me the tools to succeed in life. I have to pay it back. Really. Give something back, that makes yes. sense. And the legal part is important because um, different councils over the years have had lawyers on them. One's gone, he's the clerk magistrate now. Robert Sullivan's running for mayor of Brockton, and I, there aren't other lawyers on the council. I think there's another one running in one of the wards as well. The legal expertise, because when you're, you're dealing with an ordinance, you're right, you gotta know that it, it, it passes muster. Yes. Let's talk about that for a minute. There mm -hmm. was an ordinance that went to the council this year, went through the ordinance committee. Right. There are a couple of things, a couple of issues. We'll talk about the legalized marijuana in a mm -hmm. minute. But there was one that went through the Brockton United Ordinance. Correct. Okay. A lot of controversy over it. It was yes. called different things. People called it Sanctuary yeah. City. Other people said that's not the case. But in the end, the ordinance committee rejected it sent it to the council with an unfavorable recommendation because they said, Robert Sullivan said it violated federal law and he wasn't gonna vote for it for that Correct. reason, okay? Two of the other members were the co-sponsors of it, Gene Bradley Duranacord and Moses Rodriguez, and, um, but it was like almost two years going through the whole right. thing. So at the end, yeah. the chair of the ordinance committee was an attorney who looked at that Correct. and got advice from the legal department, yes. the city solicitor's office, and he said, no way. What do you think about that whole situation and could we have done something differently? Correct. And that is the important part of it, as being an attorney, to be able to look at an ordinance and say right from the beginning, just bring that, that red flag of like, no, this really violates something else. And to be able to have that expertise to go look and investigate it further. So I do think it's very important. I, I believe this uh, ordinance, it came about as um, a cry from the community. They wanted something to be done. So even though it didn't pass, it really, at least it, it woke up the entire community that this is an issue that some people feel about that. So in the end, I think it did serve a purpose just to be out there. But I do understand, I do agree with you that it's um, our, our resources, our time being invested in something that a lot of times in the end is not going to pass some federal um, law. Or it's going to violate something else. And it, it really, we couldn't be devoting that time to things that will pass. So that is important. And as for the Brockton United, I, as an attorney, and I do do some immigration law as well, so I do have experience in that, I really think that what the community needs is to have more information because a lot of people, they, they claim that they're afraid to call the police because they're here undocumented, but there is a federal law that really provides some protection to those people and it says the opposite. If you do call the police, if you cooperate with the police, and we prosecute that perpetrator, then we can give you something that in the end you could even get your papers and get your status situated. So the federal law, it really thought of that before us because that is a, such a, a big issue regarding immigration and it's not really a Brockton to be taken on themselves and try to fix a system that is broken federally. So. Brockton is a city of immigrants, yes. always has been, probably yes. always will be. You were an immigrant. Yes. You came yes. here, you did all the right things, yes. you went through the whole system. You, yeah. you, you, Does it upset you with all the talk that's going around? It's, it's, it's not necessarily just a Brockton issue. It's a federal exactly. issue. It's a state issue. Exactly. And it's turned into a local issue. Does it bother you? I, I'm getting the sense that you are talking like you're going to be the voice <laughs> for the immigrant community and all communities, right? Yeah, I want to be a voice for the immigrant community. I want to be a voice for the white community. I want to be a voice for the entire Brockton because I feel that I can relate to them because 
everybody when I come and I knock on their doors, they are complaining the same things, whether in respect of their race, of the language that they speak, they're all concerned about safety, they're all concerned about education, they're all concerned about their roads that needs to be fixed. There are issues and their complaints that are exactly the same, no matter where they came from, no matter the language that they speak, no matter the color of their skin. So we are Brockton, we're together at Brockton. So that's what I wanna do. I wanna bring this city together and united because we go to the same schools, we send our children to the same schools, we have the same problems as our neighbors, no matter where they came from or what language they speak at home. So I do want to be the voice for the immigrant community, and I also want to be the voice for the white Americans, the, the ones that have been their generations, Brocktonians. They've been here for 50 years, and they like to tell me the stories uh, of when they first arrived to the, to the country and also to Brockton, the Irish. So I, I sit in their living room, and I, and I listen to their stories, what they went through is exactly the same thing that it's happening to the current right. immigrants that are coming in more recent times. So we are all Brockton, we all make up Brockton. So I do wanna represent the city equally and advocate for their concerns, for their issues as a whole. So I'm gonna ask you to put on your real estate hat a little bit. Yes. And your community hat, your family hat, safety, education roads you beat me to the question the question I was going to ask you is what are you hearing when you're going out on the doors but you can't sell a house if people don't feel safe correct you if people want to know about the school system right up front yes. and, and right away and if the roads are falling apart around them they're gonna look for a house in a different area and you might right. not sell that house so do you think your level of expertise with that will lend itself to you know, being a city councilor? Absolutely. When I am showing houses um, to people who wants to buy in a South Shore area, and they'll tell me, all, all like anywhere, you know, Abington, Rockland, Whitman, they'll, they'll mention Bridgewaters, but not Brockton, please, and that bothers me. And I was like, how come? And then they start telling me, oh, because I don't feel safe. It's not that Brockton is not safe. I think it's the prospection. The people, they think you know, that perspective of being a dangerous city. We are a city in all the other surroundings, their towns, they're smaller. So people maybe feel safer in that regards. But it bothers me if people are telling me they don't want to buy something in Brockton because of safety or because the roads, like you said, is falling apart in those houses and the surrounding areas are not well taken care of. So code enforcement as a whole, code enforcement, the roads, and also safety. We definitely need more police officers. I agree. And I was listening to the current mayor speak, and he said that police officers in Brockton, they make more money, as you can expect, in the other towns. So other um, areas that are probably approximately the same size, they'll, they make less money per hour so they can afford to hire more police officers. So, so I understand that could be a concern, but we have to find a way to, be, to fund to ensure that we have more um, police on the roads and more foot patrol, more community police. And, and from what I understand, we're approximately at least 50 police officers short, yeah. which is a lot. For a city like Brockton, we do need that. So yeah, I, it, it hurts me and it bothers me if I don't sell a house that it's great in Brockton, the price is better. And just because it's Brockton, just because they're concerned about safety or schools or whatever else they could say. And, and, and yes, I see that all the time, more than what I would like to see it. Okay, it, it makes me mad when people yes. say bad things about Brockton yeah. too. So education, let's talk about education. Yes. Um, that's important. Right now, right yes. before election eve, yeah. there's a whole lot of talk about education yes. because there's a budget shortfall apparently with transportation. Um, Kids go to school, some of them don't live near the school, so yes. they have to take a bus. The, the, the formula for where kids went to school went from neighborhood schools. The city wasn't racially balanced at one point, so we did a voluntary desegregation plan and kids went to different schools across different parts of the city. The counselors are not in charge of the education, right. but the budget does go yeah. through the council. The budget is proposed by the school department through the mayor, and then the mayor submits it to the council. So what do you think about the current uh, series of events right before the election? Yeah. And what are your thoughts on public education here in Brockton? Yeah. 
public education, I think the Brockton education system is great. They're doing a phenomenal job with the resources that we currently have at hand. We're really taking on so many children that don't speak English at home or maybe some special needs that they require some additional um, resources and we're there to provide for them. But we, we definitely need more resources and I'm hearing that we will possibly be getting more funding to the Brockton education system which is great, huge and fundamental. And as to the budget that, that really caught everybody right before the election, so, so that is really huge. And I do think that as a, a city council, we have that responsibility of overseeing the budget and seeing those things beforehand. So it was as a whole, I, I believe they said they had a plan to make up for that deficit. I'm not sure what will happen now, but I do know that people, they're concerned about taxes being increased. And that is a major, huge concern. I was speaking to this elderly lady at her home. She said she already works in two different jobs. She is a senior citizen, and she is concerned because her taxes are going to be increased up to a point that she may not even be able to afford to live in Brockton. So there, this is a, a current concern that everybody has at this point. Once these things happen, that the taxes are going to get increased, and then we're going to get hit as a taxpayers because of these things. So that should be something that during budget season is one of the most important things that we really have to overlook these things and try to predict as much as possible to ensure that these things does not continue to happen in the future. So you mentioned three of the issues you're hearing when you're knocking on the doors. Do those differ from anything that you have? Do you have any ideas? Like you're a new candidate. There are two candidates that are running for re-election. There were two, what people say, are open seats. Everything's an open seat, yes. but there were two, because two of the councils that held those seats, one ran for mayor, didn't win, the other one is running for mayor. What would you bring new and different to the council than the people are there, or what might you do better? <laughs> That's a good question because um, I've never liked to be as an outsider and to be talking about politicians. So if you want to change something, then you do what I'm doing. You put your name on the ballot, you run for office, and then once you get there, you really um, bring your new perspective. Just that new eyesight to things, that new vision. Just being able to look at something without a buyer's opinion, not saying that it's buyers in a way, but once you are in that environment that's set in for such a long period of time, maybe you miss something that a newcomer would come in and be able to pick it up more because I'm more connected to the people in a way that I, I, because I'm a newcomer, I have to knock on, you know, a lot more doors to ensure that I'll be get elected, that people will right. pick me. You're so not on TV every Monday night I'm not. At, the, at the council. Exactly. And you haven't been on TV much, exactly. so. Yes. But, you, but you've made yourself recognized by your signs. It's, <laughs> it's always good. I think people want to know people up close and personal. They want to know True. who they are and yes. what they, they stand for. Yes. So there's all sorts of issues going on in the city of Brockton. What issue might you champion or what might your cause be? Have you thought about that? I, I don't mean, I'm not trying no, to put you I, on the spot. Just yeah. like what, what motivates you other yeah. than serving people yeah. yes. that you could bring to the table? Exactly. And that is a good question because I knocked at this um, lady's door and she is... She has her son in Brockton High School, and she is also you know, a professional. She works in, in Boston, and then by the time she comes home, it's already you know, late in the day and the afternoon, so she never gets an opportunity to go to the meetings. She, never, she, she, she told me clearly, I want to get involved, I want to contribute to the city, but I have no idea on how to do that because I'm usually never here. I work all day by the time I get home. So really bringing people together, letting them know what's on the agenda, gender, what's going to be in our meetings. This is, these are the topics we're going to be talking about. I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this. Because once I'm there, I'm not really representing or endorsing my own agenda. It's not really for me. It's really the people and the residents of Brockton. So the more I get to know my residents, the people, what their thoughts are, what their concerns are, what they like to, to be seen and to be done, that's how I'm going to be a better advocate. That's just how I, I do it with my mm -hmm. clients. I ask them in a divorce case, so what are you trying to accomplish here? And I try to get as close as possible. No one is ever happy in a divorce case, but as, as close as possible 
to what their ultimate goal is. That's what you try to bring it to the table as, a, as an, an advocate for them, representing them. And that would be the same way I'll be doing for the people. I know it's, it's a, a huge population of approximately 100,000 people, but that's how I've been doing during the campaign and that's how I continue to do and possibly have a TV show to inform people, correct? I just beat me to that <laughs> question too because that's what we're here for. Yes. Our government access channel, besides covering the meetings, we want people to interact like an electronic town meeting yes. or whatever. The city councilors and the wards have their ward meetings, yes. which you can get go and Absolutely. get to and participate in. Seven councilors, seven ward yes. meetings. It's a lot of meetings. Yes. But, um, and I know Councilor Sullivan had done these group meetings with the councilors at large. At yes. one point it involved the other city councilors and the school committee and even Southeastern that I had served on. So communication is key. Exactly. We're a resource. So exactly. we're here and we don't cost anything. So we will be glad to work with you. Two of the councilors already do a TV show. Ann Beauregard does. Suna Castro does. Um, the council president in the past, different council presidents, Dennis Aneri, and also uh, Robert Sullivan, they did shows. So that's what we're here for. We're, yes. It's a government channel, yes. and we're a public channel, and we're an yes. educational yes. channel. Sure. So you can pick any of them, and we'll, <laughs> we'll get you on TV. Thank you. So um, they gave me about the five-minute okay. queue left. Yes. I want to make sure, I think it's three at okay. this point. So I want you to have at least two minutes so sure. you can talk directly to people, give them your phone number, your information, you. and you can sell yourself. Forget about me for a moment, okay? Okay, so thank you so much for really taking the time to listen to this show. So my name again is Rita Mendez, and I'm running for council at large. So my slogan says, I'm a mother and not a politician, and I really mean that, because once I come to the table to represent you, I'm not gonna be coming as politically motivated. I'm gonna be coming as a mother would to represent and to really advocate for its child. So you know, when it comes to education, when it comes to safety, when it comes to these concerns that we as mother, as parents, have for our children, that's how hard I'm going to be fighting for you, the city of Brock and the residents as a whole. So I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to this. And on November 5th, please don't forget to go and vote. I believe I'm number seven in the ballot, and I really appreciate you um, putting me through this far. Vote in me in September to the November election, and I look forward to represent you as your next city council here in the city of Brockton. My phone number is 781 964 1567. If you have any questions, want to reach out to me, just send me a text message or call me. Let me know what your concerns, your issues are, and I'm here to represent you. Thank you so much. Okay, Rita, I think I have less than two minutes. Yes. Um, it's, it's, it, it's important for everybody to get out and vote. What could you say to the voters to urge them to go out? Vote for you, you already yes. covered that, but to get people yes. to participate. Yes, so voting is really a privilege. We have that right, that privilege that so many people have fought so hard for us to go there and vote. Make sure your voice is heard. No matter who you're gonna vote for, whether it's for me or a different candidate, who you're voting for me, there's so much that's going on in the city. We need you to really go out there and express your opinion, express your voice. So make sure you do not forget Tuesday at 7 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night, ensure that you go out there and do vote. It's that important, especially this election. Elections are important, and I personally think local elections are yes. more important than federal. We'll, we'll get to that next yes. year. So um, I just wanted to thank you for being thank on. You. Yes. I wish you luck, and we'll see you on election night yes. uh, here in the City of Champions. Um, we're going to have coverage of election night. We'll go out to the polls and track okay. you guys down when you're all out there campaigning. And thank you for putting your name on the ballot. That's number one, and that's the most important thing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're watching Meet the Candidates. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for election coverage and more information to help educate the City of Champions. Thanks for watching.